This video is intended to introduce lists found in the PDM administration tool, which will be used when creating a project or engineering change request in a vault. In the PDM admin tool, I will show you how to create a list. Once the list is created, I will use the list in my project and ECO template. When the project and ECO templates are ready, I'll switch over to my vault and show you how to create a new project. Lastly, I will show you the advantage of creating an SQL list when I populate my list with a project template. Um, so you're going to go into your vault. In this case, I'm just using a, a, a demo production vault here. And I'm going to go into my list node. Also, you'll need to be having uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional installed on your machine. Um, so here in the list node, I have this card list node. And I already have um, you know, two, uh, the two that we're going to be using for this demo created. but I'm actually going to create a new one just uh, or show you how to create a card list and configure it to work with SQL. So you go to the card list node, say new list, and I'll change the name to, you know, uh, SQL test list. And the first thing you're going to want to do here in this data type is change it to from SQL database. So here in this section is where you would write the actual SQL uh, command, the query command. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into detail on how to write SQL queries or commands um, because there's loads of information on the internet and on our website on how to write basic SQL queries. Um, they're really straight, pretty straightforward. And uh, in these ones down here, when we go more through the demo, we'll look at the syntax and, um, and actually test it. But in this case, this is how you start it. Create your name, you would write your SQL query, and then you're gonna need to have your server name, the database name, the login name to the SQL server database. So in this case, the SA user most likely and the password. Uh, and here for this refresh interval, the default is fine at periodic refresh every five minutes. Uh, I sometimes change this to one minute. Um, it doesn't really matter, uh, but I would have it, you know, depending on how frequently you're going to be uh, using this. Uh, in the case for us and, and file file data cards when we're running templates, um, maybe setting it to one or two minutes should be sufficient. So there's nothing configured here, so I can't save it. So I'm just going to close it and delete it. But we'll go ahead and open this one here called Project Name SQL. So as you can see, there's my name. It's from SQL Database. And here is the actual SQL query. So no need to be uh, you know, uh, overwhelmed as to what this is doing here and what exactly all this stuff means. The only thing that's really relevant to this particular example is right here where I'm calling out the particular variable from this SQL table that I want to extract information from. Um, and again, you can get all kinds of free information online on how to write these kinds of uh, queries, um, or you can just work with someone maybe from your IT team or reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you with it. Uh, here we have the information that's pertinent to connecting to the database, right? The server database name, the SA user and password. And if I do a quick test here, you can see it's going to uh, show in this case, all the, I'm not sure how many entries it'll show, but I don't have a lot of entries in this table. So here you can see it's showing, you know, about eight or nine, and they're just kind of generic, silly names. But uh, that's pretty much how the list works. Uh, and the same thing with project number, everything's pretty much the same, except here, again, the variable that I'm interested in is project number. So that's pretty much all there is to writing a SQL list based off of a SQL query. Like I said, it's very straightforward right here in the list node. <clears throat> but what I want to show that's maybe a little more useful is how, it, how can you use this kind of um, list and this, this mechanism of extracting data from a SQL database um, for, for a useful purpose, right? So what I actually have here is in a, I have some template cards here. And in my project info template card, I'm actually, when I create a new project running using this template, it's going to generate a project number using a project number serial number that we have configured that we'll look at and a project name that I provide, right? And if we go here to our serial numbers node, we can see I have a project number 
that's the serial number from string and it's proj dash a five digit counter and the next counter value is going to be the 11th entry in this case uh, and then the project name is purely just a variable here right project name and i have it being mapped you know over to some other uh file types for other uses that we'll see later um, <clears throat> So let's go ahead and do a quick um, run of the template. Here you can see I have the template. I'm not gonna go too much into templates. We have other videos for how to create and uh, manage templates. But here I'm using that template card and I'm mapping in those variables. Uh, I'm creating a little project you know, folder structure and that's pretty much all that that template's doing. So let's go ahead and run it and see how it works. So I'll go into my vault and projects folder here. And I'm going to do a right click, new, create new project. And so here's that template uh, popping up here, my project numbers there. And I'm just going to call this, you know, project SQL test new. Because I think I might already have project SQL test in there. So when I hit OK, it's doing what uh, all these other uh, templates do when you create uh, a new file or folder. It's going to write those uh, those variables and those, those entries into the database. So if I come into my project, I have a project folder data card, and there's my project number, my project name, um, and, and that's pretty much all I have going on here. But you know why you're asking probably what well, what are you going to do you know where, when, when does the sql list come into play right and what am i going to do with that so i have a template card as well for my ecr my engineering change request and as you can see here on the ecr i have a drop list here for project name and project number but those when i create my new eco or my ecr in this case it's actually pulling from special value here from the project name SQL list. So it's going to run that SQL query and display all my options to choose from for project name and project number. Uh, and in this case, both of these uh, variable controls are just read only, or sorry, they're not read only, connected to their respective variable names. And there's no, you know, you specify a value for the default value, right? So let's go ahead and leave that of that and let's run the new ECR. So I go into my engineering change requests folder here and I can go ahead and say new, create new ECR. Now this is, you know, more than just uh, a SQL related item here. This is a whole template that's providing information regarding this engineering change request. So I'm gonna provide, you know, give it some of this required information here for class type and class of change. But on the project name, I do my drop down, and sure enough, there it is, project SQL test new, right? And when I go to my project number, sure enough, there it is, project 11. So you can see I have some other you know, entries in here that are not really relevant, but you could just, you could imagine how useful this can be in so many different scenarios, right? Maybe you wanna assign, you know, you have the ECR number and then, or you have an engineering change request, that number gets generated. And then when you actually do your engineering change order, you want to reference back to that ECR number. You could use this same mechanism to show a drop list of all your ECR numbers per the SQL query. So there's there's really a lot of options and a lot of things you can do here. Uh, I've had other customers use it for where they have these customer entries here. You know, these are just a bunch of silly names. But maybe as you're adding customers into your, you know, into your PDM database you want that list to update every time a new customer gets added. And you could write a query to pull the, your whole list of customers or a whole list of vendors or a whole list of anything really that is relevant to what you want it to do. So I'm just gonna fill out the rest of this information, say, you know, it, it impacts engineering and manufacturing and hit okay. So now here is running the ECR template itself, right? So it's gonna create the ECR file there we can see our project name, project number listed the way we want it. I hit create file and there it goes. My ECR number 46 is ready to go.
And so if I look at the data card, there's my project name, project number. And if I actually open the file, um, you'll see I actually have these variables being mapped into the Exchange Request Excel file. And there you go, you can see the project name and the project number. So like I said, it's a, it's a pretty useful and diverse toolkit or tool in their PDM toolkit to uh, be consistent with data and, and put data in places you want where rather than having people manually type things in, you can give them the option to pull from a list of you know, options, in this case, a list of entries from a SQL database table. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, like I said, it's pretty short and sweet. And please go ahead and you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, if you have any questions about this video or would like to learn more about um, basic SQL queries and how to write um, simple SQL queries to extract data out of your uh, PDM vault, feel free to reach out to us. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot.